this looks good. Yeah, I'm gonna eat this by Kara's sake. Please, cake. Oh. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Kiss Capades podcast. And I have a very special guest with me today. I've tried to get her on the podcast for the longest time. She's been trying to avoid me. Uh, moved to different countries. <laughs> now she's back in Kenya, different counties. But hey, I told you it was going to happen eventually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so introduce yourself and tell people what you do. Hi everyone, my name is Talisa Lanoe. I am a photographer and a content creator. I used to be a professional swimmer and I recently moved back to Kenya. Okay. You used to be a professional swimmer? Used to be. What happened to that? It's First of all, if you don't know, Alicia, or oh, Talisa, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Alicia, Alicia is a cousin, <laughs> keep confusing the names. So Talisa um, used to represent Kenya in the Olympics, right? Yes. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. Oh, it yeah. Was, uh, the 2016 Rio Olympics. Rio Olympics. And then at the same time, I was supposed to go to, it was Brazil, right? Yes, Rio. it was Rio. Yeah. I was supposed to go and do something there for my kiss capades. Oh, wow. And then somebody stole my idea and concept and ran my campaign. You know yourselves. Oh, I'm so sorry to may hear God, that. May God bless you where you are. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so how was that? Just like, you know, because I, I, the podcast is all about health, wealth, love and happiness. Honestly, it was a dream come true. It was something that I devoted my life to since I was 13. Mm. Um, but swimming turned into more of a lifestyle than a hobby. Uh, you ate, you breathed, you did everything that was related to swimming. It took up about 35, if not more, hours of your week. Um, there were multiple sacrifices that needed to be made. So as soon as the Olympics was over, it was a good time to say bye to my swimming career. Really? But um, for me, it wasn't just about the Olympics. I think it was more about the journey to the Olympics. Oh, yeah. Uh, like one of those milestones that you exactly, have set you, targets. Exactly, you work your way up. I mean, I started professionally swimming at 13, and then I only got to Olympics at 21. So if you think about it, it was eight years of a commitment just to get there. Yeah. And there were obviously bumps in the roads, there was highs, there was lows. Um, but I look back and I definitely wouldn't change a thing. Mm -hmm. um, I got to see one of my dreams, come, my childhood dreams come true. Uh, and now it's time to move on to other dreams and other goals. <laughs> wow. No, not everybody has a story for the Olympics or representing Kenya in the national team. But, you know, kudos to that. Thank you. And just from that, like, I can tell, if anybody goes to your Instagram straight ahead, they'll just know you're into, like, really extreme, extreme adrenaline spots. I more into living my life to the fullest. I feel like you should find things in life that make you feel alive and make you feel like you're living your life. And for me, that's things that people consider extreme. But uh, if you look at skydiving, you could literally fly. Who wouldn't want to experience that sense of freedom? I wouldn't. You wouldn't? Uh, no, <laughs> no thanks. I guess that's why they <laughs> no say thanks. each their own, right? But for me, it's just a sense of freedom. It's experiencing something that you would never actually get to experience unless you put yourself out there. Well, for people who don't know, I mean, if you go to her Instagram, like, you know, after this podcast, you'll get to know more about her. If you go to her, her Instagram, you'll see her doing a lot of stunts in the air. And not those ones of like when people are doing skydiving in Diani and they have like two other people strapped on them. She's doing it alone. And even, can you do the wingsuit thing? No, that's a goal of mine for the future. I'm only 20, way, no, 20 jumps away from being able to learn how to wingsuit. So it's coming up soon. And God bless you on that. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I just, I think I used to know one person who used to do it and then she flew back to France. And you know, that was just like the end of my dream of trying to even like get close into that kind of like realm. Lifestyle. Yeah, I, that I lifestyle. think people get drawn into different hobbies and different experiences by different mm -hmm. ways. Um, for me, definitely skydiving started off, I wasn't really interested in it. It was just something on my bucket list that Did I wanted to Did you pick it try. up after swimming or just in the course of just so the swimming thing? So it was thing? when I was swimming, I was in South Africa, actually with Alicia, <laughs> now oh, that wow. you mentioned it. Mm -hmm. And all Bad of us cousins of decided mm. to try a tandem because I think skydiving is something 
that's on everyone's bucket list when you're strapped to someone else. Mm-hmm. It's something that mm-hmm. most people, except for you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> would mm-hmm. like to try. Um, yeah. And I did it, and in my head, I thought I'd feel very rewarded by the experience. Yeah. But when I got to the ground, I felt a little bit disappointed. What? Everyone's like, oh my god, you skydived, you skydived. And I yeah. was like, I didn't do anything. <laughs> oh. This guy skydived. Oh, yeah. I was just strapped to him. Yeah. So I had it in my head that I wanted to prove to myself that I could do it alone. Um, but obviously with swimming, there's a lot of restrictions on what you can and cannot do because obviously you could hurt yourself. Um, so I put it on the back burner for two years and as soon as the Olympics was done, oh, yeah. um, I decided to learn, well, do my first jump alone. And from there, it was just, the rest was history. I got my license, I'm on 180 jumps now and there's no looking back. <laughs> hey man, listen, not, not, not everybody can say that, but you know, what drives you just exercise-wise? Because all these things that you're talking about, like my podcast is about health, wealth, love yeah. and happiness. And I can also guess that you're also like a gym rat. I love the gym, yes. I think... Um, you see? Being a competitive uh, swimmer, you, yeah. you train like between, depending on the week, but anywhere from 20 to 35 hours a week. So you're used to waking up in the morning, either going to gym or the pool. It yeah. becomes part of your lifestyle. Obviously, I don't work out 20 or 35 hours a week anymore, but the gym and actually Bikram Yoga have been a really big part of my life lately, or always, actually. Mm. Um, I believe that in life, your health is the most important thing. Um, of course. You of need course. to look after yourself mm-hmm. in order to be able to pursue your goals and your happiness. So you can say um, it's just something that incorporated in your lifestyle from childhood from and childhood. And it's I just like part of you. Do you work out? <laughs> okay. I'd like to say yes, but no, but that's the thing. I but the only exercise I I do yeah. before you get back to your point and don't forget it is like my camera work. So if you see my video work there's a lot of movement and you're always running around i understand what yeah. it's like to be on so, set yeah sure. so that's kind of like where i put in my but i'm trying to incorporate it it's just that i lack the discipline and that's why when i see somebody like you doing all those outdoor activities i really admire that because i would want that there's a quote that says it takes two weeks to make or break a bad habit so all you need to do is commit to it for two weeks two and weeks. then apparently it becomes part of your lifestyle well, I can so do two weeks. Is not a lot. You can try two weeks. It might <laughs> incorporate a little bit of a, a daily, habit right? Yeah. Um, I feel like personally, the reason I love working out is, mm-hmm. especially in the, if you work out in the mornings, I feel like you have more energy throughout the day. You feel happier. You feel lighter, which is kind of ironic to some people because they're like, "How do I go spend an hour at the gym in the morning and then have yeah. more energy through the day?" But you actually really do. It, but your body can adjust to that. I'm guessing as well. It can, but it in return actually gives you more energy throughout your day so now if i don't work out i feel lethargic i feel lazy but if i go and start the uh, start the day at the gym yeah i have energy to attack my entire day so definitely I, recommend incorporating exercise into your life it's a game changer i, I admire that because i really do want that and i want that six pack so i'll try and do this i'll commit to a part Hey, how about we go to the gym together? We'll try a workout together and see how it goes. Actually, we can do that to promote your episode. (laughs) You know what? Why not? Well, let's let's set that up. Okay. I'm up for that challenge. Maybe it'll be a good intro into the gym. (laughs) I'm up for that challenge because I guess that's another way of me just like committing to something. So if people are listening to the podcast before the podcast comes out of course he will go to a gym session with me <laughs> we'll do that and then i'll try and incorporate that in my lifestyle because last two weeks ago yeah i bought workout gloves and trust me you know Have i've just been, been looking i've just been looking at them. <laughs> i just thought they look cool but that's that's all that's all that's all i get for now i just look at them and i'm like when do i start using these gloves but anyway that aside let's move to more of what you're now doing like just is it full time or can I say photography is what you're venturing into right now? So I started or at this part of your life. At this part of my life, yes. I think that there's a lot of power in storytelling personally yeah. and it's very cliche to say, but a picture is 
what is the quote? A picture Sorry. is what? A thousand, thousand words. words. Yeah, 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 exactly. There's some things that you can't convey in words, some sense of emotion, a story, but you can portray through content. Yeah. And that is what got me into content creation in the first place. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I picked up my camera and I completely fell in love. I've always been taking pictures, but just as a hobby. Um, before it was just for Instagram. And then mm -hmm. I ended up starting to take pictures of other people and other things. And I just fell in love with the power that it has to move you. And obviously, in the end, make a positive impact. Especially, I want to get into more um, conservation work and climate control. Because the only what way you're going to raise the hell awareness... Is that? What the hell is that? Are you serious? I'm so serious, oh by I'm not even gosh. lying. Listen, I'll tell you something <laughs> about my podcast. Like I learn so much, and at times when I ask questions, people think like it's crazy, but I really, I really want to understand it, and I also want to people, part of my audience, who don't know what it is, to actually also understand. Like, okay, when she's talking about this kind so of like, photography. You can go from conservation, look at poaching at the moment mm. right poaching is a huge thing here or if you look at pollution in terms of climate control so much of the ocean is polluted you walk down Diani beach which is absolutely gorgeous beautiful but you won't make it five steps without picking up a piece of plastic is it that bad it's, right now it, it's super bad and it's not just huge pieces of plastic it's even plastic that's <coughs> been broken down you find flip-flops you find uh, toy tires you find uh. everything on the beach and like I want to inspire people to look after our world but also to live their life and mm. I feel like the best way to do that is to pick up a camera and share things with the world and you see that's different because when I'm asking this it's because when other people think of photography they'll think about editorial shoots yeah. and what else is common right now commercial shoots commercial shoots the Instagram normal, like, you know, just... Um I don't think I would limit it to just that. I don't take away the power from those shoots either. I feel yeah, like a lot of yeah. people work so hard to build up their brand or mm -hmm. themselves yeah. that even if you take an editorial shoot or a commercial shoot, you're still sharing someone's story. Mm -hmm. Someone's hard work has gone into whatever their brand that they've created, whether it's a company or themselves, yeah. and you get to be part of that process as well. Um, so whether you're making a positive impact to towards them and their brand or a positive impact towards the world or things that you care about, yeah. I feel like photography is definitely a great way to do it. Nice. So what do you enjoy more when it comes to that? Like, is that, forget about the purpose, but what do you enjoy doing more? Because I can clearly tell if you're taking <laughs> pictures at the beach, you get frustrated when you're seeing, you know, all these things that are wrong and you want them to be in a whole different way? I think I'm passionate about two things. One, I like commercial photography because you get to sit with a bunch of different brands and get very creative about where their story came from, what they want to portray to their mm. target audience. Mm. There's, a, there's a lot of creativity involved. Yeah. So I think anywhere that I can be creative, I truly enjoy that experience. Mm -hmm. And anywhere that you can make a positive impact. <laughs> So very broad spectrums, but those are the two things that I enjoy. One makes me feel fulfilled. One is, who doesn't love getting creative, you know? Mm. So, um, before we continue with that, because I've seen like just through all these things that you're talking about, there's just like a time period you select for something, you do it, get it accomplished, move to the next, move to the next. Do you think photography is something that you'll stick to? Or you just think like, you know, because I can tell you're not like, um, you're an artsy person. You might like probably do this for two or three years and then be like, you know what, mm, time to move to the next one. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think that there are certain things that you discover along the way that just stick with you. And I definitely think photography is one of them. Um, I would love to eventually also get into video. Um, but... When I decided to take this career path, I thought that it would be best to master one before venturing into the other. Mm. And obviously, you're always learning. So yeah, I feel something like... Something new every day. Definitely not two years, maybe ten years. However long it takes me to master... Yeah. I don't think you ever really master anything. But yeah. as long as I feel like um, I've learned and I've grown and I'm ready to venture into video, then I eventually will. Mm. But for now, my main focus is on photography. Okay, nice. But... Let's now take it back slightly to when when you were a kid. Yes. 
what was your dream job? Because like we all had like those little <laughs> fantasies of like, you know, I want to be this as much as it might seem like it's a bit silly when you're a kid. But some people grow with that and manifest it to like just something that's completely different. When I was a kid, I wanted to be Laura Craft. <laughs> wow. Um, wow. So always had the sense of adventure, always wanted to travel. I support uh, that. I, I never really that. had a dream in mind. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. Realistically, I think I lived in this little fantasy world as a kid of all the places I wanted to go and see. I wanted to be a badass who was capable of doing everything, whether it was swimming underwater, skydiving, doing and all these And maybe that's what things. inspired all these things that um, you're doing now. I just wanted to be fearless, to be honest. That's but that's what, what you're doing now. I wouldn't say I'm fear Listen, fearless. I'm very fearful sky, of a lot of skydiving, things. Skydiving, <laughs> swimming underwater. Can you do the deep dives? What are they called? I'm learning how to free dive, actually, but I scuba dive at the moment. Well, you see, those are the things I'm talking about. The slow like, purse. I remember this this time we went to Mombasa with a bunch of friends. We were like, I think, combined so many different groups were like 32 people. And I was thinking like, since I can film and everything, wouldn't it be nice if we had somebody who can like, you know, do like the free scuba diving thing without like any gear or whatever, because I just got a new GoPro. And we can get like some really amazing shots that I... I can test. Well, out of the 32 people, I think it's three people who knew how to swim. Yeah. But again, each to their own. There's different things in life that make different people come That's alive. That's not good. I had to change my circle. <laughs> I had to. What if <laughs> something happens? Reasons. What I if something happens? I think everyone should know how to swim. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a common skill people should know. Yes. But I'm saying, I think you commit your time and... In this world, like people chase after money, but I think your time is the most valuable thing.